Hi, my name is Daniel Bay, and I'm a dentist working in Massachusetts. In this video, I'll go over two things. The first will answer what constitutes a dental emergency as well as urgent dental treatment. Second, I'll go over some guidelines to follow prior to your in-person visit to the dental office during this pandemic. Due to COVID-19, ADA, CDC, and many state dental associations have urged dental offices to postpone elective procedure, surgeries, and non-urgent dental visits. Different states have different um, estimated dates to when dental office should reopen for non-urgent treatments. For example, Massachusetts recommends that dental offices remain closed to patients seeking elective care till May 4th, and for New York it is till May 15th, and these dates may very well be postponed. Thus, for now, we're only seeing patients who have dental emergency or need urgent dental treatment. CDC and ADA have recommended this closure because we cannot reliably identify patients who are asymptomatically infected as well as those who are in their incubation period. Incubation period is a period between the exposure of an infection to the first appearance of symptoms and for COVID-19, it is two to 14 days. We all must do our part to limit our contact with other people for a while. Furthermore, many dental procedures produce aerosol, known to increase exposure potential if the patients are infected. And supplies of PPE, personal protective equipment for treating patients in hospital is critically low. If we or healthcare providers use these items for non-urgent treatments, we contribute to the risk of frontline healthcare workers being left unprotected. And these shortages currently have no end date in sight. Thus, we're postponing all non-urgent dental treatments. To help us, ADA has provided a list of what constitutes as dental emergencies as well as urgent dental treatment. Dental emergencies are life, potentially life-threatening and require immediate treatment to stop ongoing tissue bleeding, alleviate severe pain or infection, and include uncontrolled bleeding, cellulitis, which is bacterial skin infection, or diffuse soft tissue bacterial infection with intraoral or extraoral swelling that can potentially compromise the patient's airway, trauma involving facial bone, potentially that has potential to compromise the patient's airway as well. For these, the patient should go to the emergency department right away. Next, the ADA goes over what constitutes as an urgent dental treatment. They include severe dental pain from pulpal inflammation. Pulp is a vital tissue inside your tooth with nerves and blood vessels. If the tissue becomes inflamed in its confined space, it can be quite painful. Pericoronitis and third molar pain. Third molars are your wisdom teeth and pericoronitis is inflammation of soft tissue surrounding a partially erupted tooth. It usually involves your um, lower uh, wisdom tooth that are soft tissue impacted and then your opposing teeth is constantly irritating it. Surgical post-operative osteitis, which is inflammation of a bone, as well as dry socket dressing changes. Dry socket is a painful dental condition that can happen after you have a tooth extraction. Uh, blood clot may fail to develop or it may dislodge before the wound heals and the exposure of the underlying bone and nerves can be quite painful. <laughs> Abscess, which is basically a pocket of pus or bacterial infection resulting in localized pain and swelling. Tooth fracture resulting in pain or causing soft tissue trauma. Dental trauma with avulsion, which is complete displacement of the tooth from the socket or luxation, which is tooth displaced but still has some kind of attachment. Next is dental treatment that are required prior to critical medical procedures. After that is final crown and bridge cementation if the temporary crown is lost, broken, or causing gingival irritation, which is gum gum irritation. Biopsy of abnormal, um, abnormal tissue. Other Urgent dental care include extensive dental cares with defective restoration causing pain, suture removal, denture adjustment on radiation on oncology patient, denture adjustment or repair when function is impeded, replacing temporary fillings on endo-axis opening in patients experiencing pain, patients who have received pulpotomy or pulpectomy, which means if the dentist has removed some kind of pulp tissue from you and didn't receive the root canal yet, you do have an endo-axis. Patients who have received root canal therapies but have not received some kind of final restoration, you also have an endo-axis. Simping or adjustment of orthodontic wires that are piercing or ulcerating the inside of your mouth is also one. Now that we went over what constitutes as dental emergency as well as urgent dental treatment, I'll go over what to do next. 
Prior to the emergency dental uh, treatment, CDC recommends us to contact the patient. They recommend us to telephone triage all patients in need of emergency dental care and access the patient's dental condition and determine whether the patient needs to be seen at the dental clinic. If the dental treatment can be delayed, we should provide the patient with detailed home care instructions and any appropriate pharmaceuticals. ADA has a very useful documentation called ADA Inter Interim Guideline for Management of Emergency and Urgent Dental Care. To very briefly go over it, the interim guideline has three algorithms for dental healthcare providers to consider during this pandemic. I'm not quite sure why they call it algorithm. It's actually just flowcharts. Uh, the first is triaging patients for emergency and urgent dental care so that we can understand the patient's dental condition and determine whether the patient needs to be seen in clinics for urgent treatment. The second part is screening to identify COVID-19 infection for patients who need urgent treatment. This flowchart decides which clinic settings the patient should be seen at. Patients with active COVID-19 should not be seen in dental settings per CDC guidelines. For these patients, dental treatment should be provided in a hospital or other facility that can treat the patient using the appropriate precautions. If the patients have signs or symptoms of acute respiratory infection with or without a fever, advise the patient to go to the emergency department, preferably with dental consult available. The third flow chart shows how to minimize risk of COVID-19 transmission during urgent dental treatment for both the patient and the provider. Please check out the full interim guideline. I'll link the site below for it is a detailed documentation with precautions to consider when treating patients during this pandemic. For emergencies and urgent treatment that can be seen in dental setting, CDC states that oral health care providers should avoid aerosol generating procedures whenever possible, and that we should use the highest level of personal protective equipment, PPE, available. CDC's website recommends us to, if available, wear a N95 or higher level resp respirator during emergency dental care for patients without COVID-19, in addition to gloves, gowns, and eye protection. This is considering that patients who are asymptomatic may still be COVID-19 infectious. ADA states that we should consume that all patients can transmit the disease. If a respirator is not available in your clinic, use a combination of a surgical mask as well as a full face shield. If the minimal acceptable combination of surgical mask and a full face shield is not available, do not perform any dental emergency uh, treatment. Refer the patient to a clinic with the appropriate PPE according to the CDC. Patients with COVID-19, as well as patients with uh, signs and symptoms of acute respiratory infection, should be seen in a hospital or other facility that can treat the patient using the appropriate precautions. I will link all the CDC and ADA website I use for the video. Um, this video is a brief, brief overview of the guidelines. Know that the updates are made regularly and thus there may be changes to the information provided. Please visit the CDC and the ADA's website to access the most up-to-date protocols, guidelines, and recommendation in their entirety. All right, that wraps up the video. Um, I pray for everyone's safety and hope that this difficult time will pass us soon. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram. See you soon.